What is up, you guys? Welcome back to episode three of Here's the Thing. Um, hope you guys had a good day today. Um, it's been a while, but I was uh, was uh, purchasing something on Amazon to try to maybe a little spice it up a little bit here in the podcast. That's where that kind of new intro came into play. Got a new audio mixer. If you're watching on YouTube, you can't see it. It's out of frame. And also, if you're listening to the audio, you can't you can't see it. <laughs> but uh, it's right here. It's right here. It's the Go XLR Helicon, and it's it's pretty cool. I'm I'm very new to it kind of playing around with it so hopefully it can add some spice to the podcast today and going forward so yeah let's mention this is episode three let's let's get the let's get the sadness out of the way of course we all know by now the oh man the the passing of twitch um such a kind human being such a positive light in this world in this dark world at, at, at many times um, passing away yesterday, uh, to suicide, and, um, it's just really sad, man, um, without going too deep into it, because it's not my place to, um, I'll just, I'll discuss, um, how he, how he made me feel, and, um, I'll just start off with, every time I watched him on Ellen, like I said, he was just such a bright light, um, lit up a room that smile was contagious every time that Ellen would introduce him to to dance into the crowd and everything man it was awesome to watch he was an extremely talented dancer he was extremely talented at what he what he did and um, I respect the hell out of people like that I really do um, people that are at the top of their game I, I really respect and gravitate towards because that's what I'm trying to strive to be is the best at whatever I do um and uh man it's just it's I don't know I I told my mom this yesterday (coughs) that uh I'm not comparing Twitch to Kobe Bryant that's completely unfair to both of them um two completely different professions but just the same feeling I had when when I heard of Kobe's passing, it kind of hit me the same way with Twitch. Even though he was kind of lesser, I mean, he wasn't lesser known, but he, you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. It was still that same feeling, though, man. It was just, it was like this, this gravity, like, oh my god. Yeah, you know, I just, it's tough. It, it's tough now that he's gone because. It was tough when the Ellen show ended because those two had a chemistry like none other. And, and now that he's completely gone, it's it's a weird feeling. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just weird. Um, he was such, like I said, the best way I can put it, he, he was such a bright light in a very dark world. And um, <clears throat> he's going to be missed. And I would just say anybody who is struggling with depression of any kind just reach out to someone for help if if you can um just talk to somebody whether that be a professional a family member a friend anybody don't don't suffer alone talk to someone let them know how you're feeling so that maybe they could just offer some comfort or some advice or anything just go and talk to somebody try to help yourself before it's it's too late that's that's all I can really say about that I don't want to get too into that topic because it's not necessary um I just my heart goes out to his his wife Allison and their three kids it's just it's it's a very tough situation Very tough. It's a touchy subject. So I'm going to sway away from there. We're going to mix in uh, some some poking fun at me, uh, my coffee addiction. I've got one. I've got one. I talk to people and they're like, well, Mason, you just like coffee. No, 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 nay, nay, nay. It's worse than that. it's, It's an addiction. Anytime that I go to sleep and I can't fall asleep, it's an addiction. 
Um, it's probably not the best thing to drink coffee um, before bed at like 10 o'clock. Uh, so that probably has something to do with it. Also, given the fact that the coffee is is not decaf. It's the full-fledged. <gasps> You're going to be up. Shakes. Shakes. I don't get the shakes. You know, I don't get hyper. I just can't fall asleep. So, um, yeah, I, I got to lower it down. Um, my mom actually got me tea today because it's supposed to be better for you, I guess. <clears throat> um, for, for like a, a before bed drink than coffee. So we'll, we'll have to see if that changes anything, but, uh, I've been trying to drink more water. That's always a good thing. Um, but that doesn't maintain it, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. Hopefully fingers crossed. <laughs> Quoting and Grinch. Uh, which actually is a good segue. Let's let's talk about Christmas movies. Let's talk about Christmas movies. Um, there is a lot of them. I, I don't know if I have a favorite, if I'm being completely honest with you. One that I'm not a fan of, it's not a bad movie. It's just it's not my style. Christmas Story. Um, I know my mom l- loves that movie. It's one of her favorites, I believe, I think. Mom, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I, if it's not your, like, your ultimate favorite, I apologize. Um... But it's just not my style. I don't know if it's the old-fashioned setup that it has. I just, I don't, I, I can't, I can't get into it. But, um, I mean, it's a good movie. It's a good story. Um, but some notables, <laughs> some notables, definitely uh, The Grinch. The Grinch with uh, Jim Carrey. I don't think they could have chosen a better person to play that role than Jim. Um, the only other person I've mentioned this to my mom before that I feel like they could have had was Mike Myers, maybe. But even then, I don't even think it would have the same oomph. You know what I'm saying? So, um, all the other actors around Jim Carrey in that film also play their parts phenomenally. So, um, that's definitely one of the top Christmas movies in general. Uh, I would say is the consensus. Um, Elf. Will Ferrell, that's also a a great one. Got to be at the top of everybody's list. Um, Again, same with Jim Carrey and the Grinch. I don't think they could have chosen a better person to play Elf. I I can't even think of anybody else, really. I mean, Will Ferrell just captures that character so well. Um, Also, the other actors around him played their parts well as well. Zoe Dejanel. God, I keep forgetting the other actors' names. But um, they're big names. I should have done my research. Uh, just an overall great movie though. Um, Christmas with the Cranks, Tim Allen, a great movie. Um, I I don't know. There's just something about that movie that really just screams Christmas for me. Um, even like the, the minute details, like the neighborhood that it's set in, I think it's Chicago. I think that's the city it takes place in, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless, the neighborhood that it's set in, it's, it's, it's just got that, that, that really basic Christmas movie neighborhood, you know, where the houses are always, I mean, every neighborhood and houses are close together, but you know what I'm saying? That, that setting, it's, it's, it, it screams Christmas. It screams holiday with the snow and the, and the snowman on top of the roof and, and, uh, just the, 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 I don't know, the camaraderie of the neighbors and everything. It just, it screams Christmas and it makes me feel Christmassy. Uh, just like the elf and Grinch too. Um, Santa Claus with, with Tim Allen. He's in a lot of Christmas movies, um, which isn't a bad thing. That's a great movie, Santa Claus. The first one and the second one. The third one, not so much. Not so much. I don't know what it is about the third one. My my mom is the same way. We just, we can't get into the third one. The story is just, it feels like it's forced. Um, I mean, the acting's okay. It's just the story's not there. I don't know if they got different writers or what have you. It's just, I don't know. The first movie in any movie is always going to be the best. In the second and thirds, if there are second and thirds of that film, they're going to fail in comparison. It's just the way it is. Um, Now, there's exceptions depending on what kind of fan you are of the franchise. You know, Men in Black, especially for me, um, I'm a huge fan of Men in Black, no matter how you feel about Will Smith. That's a whole different conversation. Um, But I've always loved those movies since I was a kid. And, um, you know, the first movie is great, the second movie is great, and the third movie is great. That's an exception. Shrek, um, 
exceptions. Uh, Back to the Future, exception. Harry Potter, exception. There's exceptions, um, but yeah, what was I talking about? Santa Claus. Yeah, that's just a great movie. It's a great movie. The first and second ones. I'm going to preface that. First and second ones. Uh, Christmas Vacation, Chessy Chessy Chase. (laughs) Chevy Chase. Um, A great movie. A great movie. Uh, I love the scene where they're sledding. I think that's my favorite part of the... One of my favorite scenes in the movie is when they're sledding on the hill. Uh, <laughs> and he rubs it with... What was it? What did he... Did he rub it with something? If I recall? Did he rub it with like some kind of like oil or whatever it was? I can't recall. But it, it was just... I, I love that scene so much. And um, also the one where he's swearing oblivions or whatever... I, it's just a great movie. It's a great movie. Um, I'd like to know what your guys' favorite uh, Christmas movies are. If you have any, leave them in the comments. Um, how they make you feel. Uh, Christmas music. Here we go. Now, this is a little different. Um, I don't know, man. I, I know Mariah Carey's song is always big around this time of year. I just I can't get into that song. I don't know whether it's... I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Mariah Carey. I mean, nothing against her. Is, I, I'm sure she's... I'm not going to discuss it. Uh, <laughs> don't expose me. Um, I'm just, I've never been a big Mariah Carey fan. I'll just leave it at that. Um, also, the song is kind of overplayed. But really, what, what Christmas song it isn't? Uh, it's just, I don't know. We'll move on. <laughs> Justin Bieber, Mistletoe. That's got a pretty catchy beat. Um, I mean, if, I, if I'm going to look at my playlist right now. I'm going to um, give you guys a little bit of a rundown of my Christmas playlist. I've got It's Christmas Time Again by the Backstreet Boys. Um, it's one of their older ones. Christmas Time, that's really old Backstreet Boys. They just came out with a Christmas album. Their full, full it's been a long week. <laughs> their first full length Christmas album recently, so um, that's pretty exciting. Um, they did a cover of Last Christmas by Wham!, Right? Yes. Oh my God! I looked at my playlist and I didn't think it was Wham for a second. Um, but that's always a great Christmas song. Driving Home for Christmas by Chris Rea. That um, did I say by Christmas? Driving Home for Christmas. It's been a really long week, you guys. Uh, <laughs> I know that's one of my mom's favorites. She's been wanting me to to um, learn it on on guitar and sing it, and I just haven't I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna have to do that. Trans Siberian Orchestra. That song is always a classic. Uh, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Justin Bieber. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, the Bryn Cartelli version. If you don't know who Bryn Cartelli is, she won, um, I can't remember what season of The Voice it was, but did she win? Oh my God, Mason, you really need to do your research. I know she was a part of The Voice. I'm pretty sure she won. Um, I don't have to worry. She's never going to listen to this. So Whether she won or not, it's a good, it's a good version of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, Santa Tell Me by Ariana Grande That's a great song, it's catchy It's catchy. Uh, It's You That I'll Miss This Christmas by Alex G Alex G is a musician on YouTube um, That's one of her older songs And that's always uh, It's just one of my favorites It's just a catchy tune And it's, uh, it's a good song That's that's pretty much my, my Christmas Oh, God, A New York City Christmas by, by Rob Thomas um, The legend songwriter, frontman of Matchbox 20 Solo artist so that's my Christmas playlist. Um, I don't like one song more than the other. They're all balanced to me. Uh, it's the holidays, man. It's the holidays. So you got to have joy this time of year. And uh, Christmas movies and Christmas songs give me that. Um, so we're going to be talking about now living with snow. Actually, let's leave that one for last. We're going to talk about uh, curveballs that life can can throw to you at times. Without getting too much into it, it's been it's been a year for myself individually and my family. Um, my family and I like to keep things behind the scenes close to the vest, um, and that's what I will do here. Um, it's just it, it, it's been a year for us. Um, and a lot of curveballs have been thrown. Uh, I feel like 
the best thing to do when life gives you a curveball, a situation that you're not expecting to ever happen or you don't want to have happen and maybe you can't immediately deal with, I think the best thing that you can do for yourself individually to not drive yourself totally nuts with anxiety and, and, and stress is to find things that you love to do, right? That you love to do and try to escape from those curveballs and negatives for at least, even if it's an hour, hour and a half, a day, try to find things that you love to do. That's what I try to do to help myself. Um, so for example, I love doing this. I, I love podcasting. I love singing. I love playing the guitar. I love watching YouTube. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube in my free time. Um, sometimes too much just the most random videos too i've been watching uh movie reaction videos i've been watching uh vanos gaming I've, I've watched him for a long time t martin i've watched him he's another video game content creator um i go as far as to watch abandoned places videos i find that stuff really interesting shout out the proper people that's a great channel those guys go to abandoned places and um there we go I'm going to get on a little tangent about them. They're way more, they're way braver than I would ever be doing that stuff. Um, sometimes they go to these places where they have security and <laughs> not afraid, man. They go right in. So shout out to them. Anyway, curveballs. Just try to find things that you love to do, man. And, and try to do them for, like I said, a day, an hour, doesn't matter. So you can get your brain away from the negatives and the curveballs that life uh, has for you. So that ties into living with the snow and how to deal with it. That's a curveball. <laughs> if you live in a state that has snow, so I'm talking people that, you know, don't live in California, Texas. Not last year. That was different, Texas. But, you know, I'm saying the warmer states, Florida, people that don't live there, like me. I live in Wisconsin, and that's the worst. We just had our first major, like, our first major s snowstorm here, packed on a ton of, I got a bleep button now on this thing, um, of snow, and let me tell you, the trees don't like that. They don't like that, and when that happens, the limbs, they give sometimes, and sometimes, and holy lord be with me, sometimes the trees don't like that. The whole tree itself. Fortunately for me, some limbs fell off of a tree in my backyard. Extremely close to my garage. It didn't fall in my garage, but they fell right next to it. And and now I'm stressing about like, oh my god, what if this tree falls on this this house? I'm screwed. <laughs> um, but you gotta you gotta try to just you, you gotta try to escape I gotta try to escape that. Like I said, by doing the podcasts by watching YouTube, the Milwaukee Bucks, even though they're getting destroyed tonight. It doesn't matter. I have that. I have the Packers. Even though their season's not going so hot. You got to find stuff to occupy your mind. Um, otherwise, you're going to go insane. So, yeah. Living with the snow, I think that pretty much says it. I don't like it. And if you don't like it, I feel you. You're not alone. You're not alone. Um, just... Again, the curveballs in the snow, they're, they're tying into each other. <laughs> Creates a snowball. <laughs> um, pun master over here. Just, just find stuff that you love to do, whether it be hanging with friends too. Just be kind to people. Find things that you love to do. Drink some coffee, not too much. Maybe try some tea, some water. And uh, maybe watch a good Christmas movie or listen to a good Christmas song uh, with the holidays coming up. But guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. This has been fun. This is probably another short episode. Um, I haven't looked at the time. I'll look after. But I think this went pretty well. I'm excited to um, <clears throat> use this, this XLR a little bit more, play around with it get more creative for the next episode. Thank you guys so, so much for watching or listening, however you guys are streaming this. I really do appreciate you. 
And um, again, I can't stress enough. If, if you're feeling at all depressed, sad, or whatever, talk to somebody, talk to your friend, your family. Uh, do whatever you have to do to not feel that way. I know it's not easy, and that's easier said than done, but let me tell you, you're wanted on this earth, you're loved, and I think you'll find that you're not alone. So, the happiest people on the surface are the ones that are are going through it. I've heard that a lot the past two days, and that's the truth. So, Thank you guys. Love you. Until the next one, stay safe. And yeah, see you guys later. The Here's the Thing Podcast.